All right, everybody, welcome to today's post. Um, today's subject, I think, should be pretty entertaining and pretty interesting. Um, we see in the media a whole lot about uh, the health values of essential fatty acids and your omega-3s and your omega-6s and your omega-9s. Um, you know, and then we also hear at the same time the dangers of uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which is what I talked about yesterday. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit and kind of show you why things work the way they do. Now, first of all, <clears throat> An essential fatty acid is called essential because your body doesn't make it. That means you have to get it from some source of dietary supplement or from food. Um, your body does not naturally have these things in them. Um, just like your essential amino acids, they need to come from your food sources because your body does not make those things. Um, now, the, the whole goal of your essential fatty acids is to have a balance in your body, okay? Um, the end results are your prostaglandins, okay? You got PG3, PG2, and PG1. Now, an analogy that you can think about this is, imagine that you've got a tournament going on between, let's say, the Florida Gators, the Florida State Seminoles, and we'll say the uh, North Carolina, or the Tar Heels, anyway. So you've got the garnet and gold, you've got the orange and blue, and you've got the sky blue from North Carolina. So we'll say that this is your garnet and gold, this is your sky blue, and this is your orange and blue for the Gators. Now, the stadium, the parking for the stadium that this tournament's going to happen in is way off in the distance, about two miles away. So what happens is everybody parks in this, what they call parking ride, and they ride, but, ride a bus to get to the stadium, okay? So you got your people that are wearing their colors, the orange and blue, garnet and gold, and baby blue, and what happens is they go to get on this bus. Now, if a bunch of your garnet and gold people beat everybody else and they get on that bus first and they come to the stadium, then your stadium is going to be feel, filled with garnet and gold people. Now, if it's an equal amount of garnet and gold and orange and blue, then you got a stadium that's equally and everybody's cheering the same way. It's all equal. Or if you have a, a, an increase of people in their sky blue that get on that bus and they make it to the stadium and the stadium is full of the sky blue people. In other words, what happens is the, the, the fatty acids or the fans in this analogy that get on the transportation system or get through this system here and get to the end result is what ends up being produced. So you have a fan base that's based on the amount of people that can get into the system and get there. Well, same thing with your fatty acids, okay? Now again, what we want to have is we want to have a balance. We want to have a balance of your um, omega-3 fatty acids and your omega-6 fatty acids. Your arachidonic acid, which is your AA here, does have some health benefits, um, but it's got a lot of health detriments too, as I'm about to go through. Okay, so <clears throat> you got your omega-3s. Um, you have the source of this uh, initial chemical here, we're going to call it ALA, is your flaxseed oil, your canola oil, your walnut oils and different things like that. And then they go through a series of chemical conversions in your body to eventually becoming what's called prostaglandin 3. Um, now notice right here, your EPA. This is where a lot of people get their omega-3s from, and this is the best place to get it, is from your cold water fish or your uh, supplements with the cold water fish oils, cod liver oil, um, uh, different things like that. Uh, if you're eating your fish dietarily, be careful not to eat farm-raised fish because it's actually real high in the inflammatory factors. <clears throat> we'll talk about that later though. So anyway, this PG3 has a very, very strong anti-inflammatory effect on the body. It's very, very good for function, for nerve generation, for a lot of different liver functions. Uh, very, very beneficial, okay? Now on the other side over here, we have your omega-6s. Um, the source up in this area is your corn oil, your safflower oil, sunflower oil, peanut oil, some of your red meats, your eggs, different things like that have this in it. And it goes through a series of conversions to become what's called prostaglandin 1. And this also has some good benefits to it. Um, it, it maintains the gut lining of your intestines um, and other house cleaning things that help the body uh, function. Okay, and then you have your arachidonic acid, and this comes primarily from your red meats, um, from your shellfish, your dairy, um, from mollusks, some different, some different things like that. And uh, this is very pre prevalent in our diet. Um, and what happens here is this comes in and forms prostaglandin 2. Now these are our inflammatory prostaglandins. These are the prostaglandins that they call and cause inflammation. Now in some situations that's okay. If you cut your finger, your body's going to send a response in there 
to cause that finger to inflame a little bit. And it's also going to send some blood clotting factors in there to cause that uh, uh, scab to form. And um, then you have your inflammatory leukotrienes that come in and cause the inflammation to stabilize the joint so that it has a chance to heal. So that's a good function. But as goes with anything, you've got to have everything in balance. And what happens is, because of the sources of these, we end up with a whole lot of this stuff in our body. Got to check the time on the video real quick. Okay, we're doing okay. You end up with a whole lot of this stuff in your body, and that causes an imbalance. And when you don't have enough of your anti-inflammatory omega-3s, this imbalance can lead into chronic inflammation. Okay? So, your arachidonic acid here. Now, now here's something I want to explain first. <clears throat> All of these are converted into these prostaglandins by an enzyme called cyclooxygenase. We have a CO, okay? All of them are converted by that enzyme. Now, when you take a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, what it does is it inhibits this enzyme. So it cuts off, basically, this pathway, which causes your inflammation. So that's how you get relief from the inflammation. It also cuts off this pathway, which is your gastrointestinal lining maintenance track. And that's why you start getting those GI bleeds, because it's inhibiting that ability to maintain your intestinal lining. It also cuts off this, which gets you your anti-inflammatory response. So while it gives you temporary relief, it's actually causing all kinds of detriment in the body. And here's something that's key. This arachidonic acid, which converts into the PG2, if this enzyme is cut off, then it doesn't, the, this pathway no longer goes there, it just goes here and here. It goes into your pro-inflammatory, and your leukotrienes are the things that cause allergies, asthma, all these different inflammatory responses in our body, rheumatoid arthritis, um, you know, different things like that. And this increases. Leukotrienes are up to 1,000 times stronger than histamines. Histamines are the things that cause your allergies in your body. Leukotrienes are 1,000 times stronger. So you're increasing the leukotrienes, which is increasing a lot of the problems in your body. You're also increasing your platelet aggregation. What that means is your blood clotting factor, which is what leads to your heart disease and your cardiovascular problems. So that explains why um, when you take these anti-inflammatories, you have all kinds of people that bleed out. 16,500 people a year will die. They will have gastrointestinal bleeding that will kill them from taking anti-inflammatory medication. Um, it also leads to increased overall inflammation in the body, allergies, different things like that. And um, it also leads to uh, uh, heart disease because of the platelet aggregation. Okay, <clears throat> so that's what, how non-steroidal anti-inflammatories work. They cut off this pain here, but they cause all kinds of other problems. Just like, uh, you know, what happens with uh, almost any medication, there's always a side effect. Now, the COX-2 inhibitor that came out, the Vioxx, the Celebrex, those only cut off this enzyme. So they thought this was a miracle drug because they didn't know about this pathway. So when they cut off this enzyme, it increased all of this, and that's why you had so many people having heart disease, heart attacks, all these different problems. So, um, <clears throat> so that's why Medica or the anti-inflammatories, they're okay for a couple days, your body can handle that, but long term, they're gonna wreak all kind of havoc. Now when I come into the next video, we're gonna talk about um, different pathways and how to actually help this, okay?